Hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here again and welcome to another Tuesday teaching tip. Now today I'm seated at my piano um, because I was going to continue this theme of getting pupils to reflect on their progress that they've made and their playing as well. And I talked talked about this last week a little bit. So I thought I'd give you some practical ideas for the sorts of things I do. And these are just starting points. Please do take them and work on them. So three different ideas. The first one I mentioned last week, which is the thermometer, as I call it. And I'm sure lots of other people do. So the thermometer is the simplest to me form of, of um, communication of the student showing me. And we simply do, you know, is, is it a thumbs up? Or is it a bit iffy still, but making, you know, where are you, going, where are you going to do that? Is it pointing up or is it an iffy pointing down? Or, of course, is it down there? I often start a, a lesson with asking them how practice has been. Or I might even specify, how's the work on the storm at sea been this week? And, and it's a good way then of being able to judge how much time or how, how much they you need to spend on it with a student without them having to say anything. And they, they, they use these very, very well indeed. Another way that I encourage them to reflect on the progress that they make is by using um, a sort of a self-assessment type of thing. So here I might use a... Um, a green for go is it green for go is it pink for think or is it orange for okay so they might play for example i've got one student who's playing the storm at sea and he's by Gurlit, and he's just struggling a little bit with this bar here because it's quite it moves up the piano okay it's a d minor chord d minor broken chord all the time but each time the pattern is slightly differently and he starts off really well. That's the first time, and then he just can't. And it becomes more painful as he goes up. So on Sunday, say to him, so where does it become a pink for think? Or is it all pink for think? And he'll be able to stop at the point where he suddenly goes, oh, that's where it becomes hard. That's where I start to struggle. So pink for think orange for okay, green for go. If you've got traffic lights or if you've got some cards that you can use, even better. But just having those little phrases really is very useful too. So that's the second way of getting them to reflect on their playing and their progress. And the third way is slightly more refined and this is um, giving themselves marks. And I will do this with students of all ages, which I will um, explain a bit more about advanced level in a moment or two. So with younger children or with younger students or less experienced students, um, I have a, a seven out of 10 rule that they're absolutely used to. So to move on from a piece, they have to be able to give themselves seven out of 10. And that means it's got to have some rhythmical fluency. It's got to have most of the right notes, not necessarily all of them, but most of the right notes. They've got to be able to keep it going. They've got to be able to play it at approximately the right tempo. And the music has got to have its musical integrity. So it, it, it's got to sound like the piece of music it, it should be. And in order to move on, they've got to be able to achieve that 7 out of 10. And that gives them a really good spur. And they're very used to now saying, when I ask them, so is it a 7 out of 10? Or is it 8 out of 10? Or 9 out of 10? Oh, I think it's 6.5, Sally, I'll often get. They'll be hedging their bets. And I will either agree with them, well, yeah, I think it was only a six, you know, because, and then I'll tell them why, and why did you think it was a 6.5? They are often able to um, judge themselves and say what needs working on. So if I want to be a little more specific, I will um, say to them when I'm introducing, you know, does it have the right notes? Does it have the right fingering? Is it steady and rhythmical in the groove? Were the hands really together? Did it feel really easy peasy? Where was it on that scale of things? And I will often demonstrate. So let's take a pentascale. Scales are great for this, but pieces as well. Here's a pentascale. Here's a five out of 10 pentascale. So you 
could say, did it have the right notes? Oh, no, it had a dodgy moment. Did you use the right fingerings? Actually, yes, the fingerings were good. Was Did it have a steady and rhythmical groove? Mm, no, not really. And were the hands together? Mm, not really. So, and did it feel easy? No, it felt really quite a struggle. So here's a 9 or a 10 out of 10. encourage the student to feed back what they heard there that was different. So with adult students and teenagers as well, actually it's a very useful method, this 7 out of 10, to get them to reflect on their progress between the lessons and feedback in the next lesson. So I've got one adult in particular who, who is really, really enjoying this. And each um, before each lesson, the day before, I know it will arrive tomorrow because he's got a lesson on Thursday, he will have reflected on the progress that he's made on each of his four pieces and he will give himself a 7 out of 10 for accuracy, for tempo, for fingering, for ownership, for communication and for enjoyment. And enjoyment is a really, really important part of this. If the enjoyment is down at something like two or three, doesn't matter what the age is, you know you're probably not onto a winner. If they enjoy the music, even if the rest of them are really low, if they're enjoying it and the challenge of learning it, they will have the motivation to succeed. You can't give them a challenging piece if they're not enjoying it. They will just get nowhere. So he just rates himself really quite objectively. He doesn't get all emotional about it. It's just very objective. Yeah, I'm still having problems with getting this up to speed. I'm still doing this. The fingering isn't right here. And what that means is that together in the lesson, we can really dig into those points and I can help him to move his, his learning and his progress and his playing forward in a very, very um, uh, methodical way, I suppose, and in the most useful way I can. So I went on a bit there, didn't I, about these ways that we can help our students to reflect on their playing and on their progress. Just to summarise, I talked about the thermometer, which is a nice, easy system. We talked about pink for think and green for go and orange for OK, which is a little more um, thoughtful. We also talked about using marks out of 10, 7 out of 10, could be 5 out of 10, but 7 out of 10 being, for me, the minimum. And then we talked about how adults can be can be encouraged and teenagers can be encouraged to use this in a in a deeper way as well that will really help them to reflect and acknowledge their progress over time. Hope you find that useful. Bye bye for now. <laughs>